Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we are taking a look at Grey Zone Warfare that uh, came out on Steam not too, too long ago and we are going to see how it performs on CPUs and GPUs. So let's get to it. So, Grey Zone Warfare is a game from the indie Czech studio Madfinger, which until now had mainly developed mobile games. Grey Zone Warfare is a multiplayer tactical FPS with an open map and a fairly large playing field in PvPvE or PvE only, depending on the servers. And there are three factions to choose from to compete on the map in addition of the AI enemies. The game runs on Unreal Engine 5. It was released not too long ago on Steam in early access, and the game has had its small success since then, and so we are going to observe how it goes from a performance point of view because it's interesting on several levels while keeping in mind that it's a nearly access game and therefore in terms of optimization it's clearly not quite there yet. So it's on Unreal Engine 5 and it shows. The game is not perfect from a technical point of view and the art style is not necessarily one that will please everyone but the UE5 text like Nanite still looks impressive here with the numerous trees and foliage draw distance and the almost invisible LOD which avoids the popping found in most games. We also find lumen and virtual textures and it's true that the game looks pretty good. We find really convincing fields and forest is very bushy and the display distance is impressive thanks to Nanite and it's cool to see that this kind of visual can come from smaller studios nowadays. And in some ways, this lush jungle reminds me a bit of the very first Far Cry, which is now 20 years old. Yeah, I feel old now, but even if Far Cry is totally outdated, technically speaking. At the time, well, in my mind, Far Cry was looking just like Grayson does, even if, well, clearly it doesn't, but it's interesting to see how things have evolved since then. But let's immediately take a look at the annoying points for this game. In 2022, we saw a bunch of games released with Unreal Engine 4, which were and still are for the most part are still victims of stuttering. So the stutter engine now, in the first couple of UE5 games that I was about to test like Remnant 2 or Lords of the Fallen weren't as bad as Jedi Survivor or Hogwarts Legacy stutter-wise, even if we still found traversal stutters here and there. But there are games like Fortnite where we always have stutters when loading shaders, whether to load player skins or map segments. So we know that unfortunately Unreal Engine 5 is not yet free of stuttering. All that to say that, yeah, Grey Zone Warfare is victim of big, big stutters, and I think it's the two types of stutters here. We have both traversal and also shadow compilation stutters. And this is mainly apparent when you are in the copter, and as you cross the map, you have quite a lot of stutters, and you also encounter them when you just walk around on the map. On the other hand, some of the stutters no longer appear once they have occurred once, so the more you play, the less stutters you get, but it's still very annoying and at times the game freeze for like one to two seconds which is horrible so yeah it would be good for the game to have a good shader compilation sequence at first launch to avoid some of those because it's really really bad another issue is that the servers don't seem super stable either for the moment i don't know if it's a netcode issue or something else but you often end up kind of lagging when moving and animation seems a bit off and rubber bandy but it's not related to your PC performance. So yeah, already on those two points alone, there is still a lot of work to do for the developers in terms of optimization. The other big issue is that the game is just really, really heavy, like a lot of Unreal Engine 5 games, but we will look at that a bit later. And as far as graphic option menu goes, it's fairly basic, but a functional menu. You get the basic UE5 presets, and then you find the low, medium, high, and epic quality modes. And as the menu is see-through, you can see what it changed directly in game, which is pretty good. We also find the three classic upscalers, GLSS, FSR, and GSS, and we also get TSR, the Unreal Engine upscaler. We also get both DLSS and FSR frame generation, and that is both a good and a bad thing for PvE mode. Why not? For PvP on the other hand, I don't recommend it. In any type of competitive game, activating frame generation increases the latency of the title, so you lose responsiveness. It seems nice to get a lot of FPS, but if it is at the cost of your responsiveness, it's kind of pointless in the end. And I still don't understand why frame generation is being added to titles like Call of Duty or any type of competitive game, it's totally counterproductive. But well, on the upscaler front, things are kind of interesting. In terms of image quality, as usual, there are good and bad things, and overall GLSS offers a more stable image in terms of reconstruction. On the other hand, on certain elements, it produces more pronounced ghosting than other solutions, particularly indoors, so it's up to you to see if you like the result or not and if the ghosting is a problem for you. 
FSR is clearly the worst of the upscalers here. It produces a fairly grainy image. We also get a lot of flickering, which is fairly typical of FSR and in motion. With so much foliage, it quickly become a blurry mess, even more so in low resolutions. The XCSS DP4A is somewhere in between. It's more stable than FSR and the image is overall better. In terms of ghosting, it's also slightly better than DLSS. XCSS is as usual a bit heavier on resources than the other two upscalers if you don't use an Intel graphics card and there is also a bunch of artifacts here and there that you don't get with DLSS or FSR. And the good surprise here, in fact, come from TSR, the Unreal Engine upscaler. Right now, in this game, it is the one which offers the best compromise for my taste. In terms of image stability, it's a bit below DLSS, but clearly above FSR. In terms of ghosting, it's not perfect, but better than DLSS to me. And in terms of compute cost, it's lighter than XCSS, and it works on all graphics cards. So right now, to me, it's a win for TSR here. I even quickly tested TSR against FSR with a GTX 1060 to see if the game was playable with an upscale 1080p for the old cars. And yeah, with FSR, it quickly becomes a mess in motion with flickering all over, while TSR just looks much better. It's much cleaner for what it is. I mean, it's still 540p upscale. Yeah, so it's not great, but even as you go to IRS, TSR keeps winning. I was rather impressed. And so why am I talking so much about upscaling? Quite simply because the game is so demanding that you will probably have to use it. On top of that, there is no basic TAA in the title, so whatever happens, it's FSR AA, DLAA, XCSS native, or TSR at max resolution scale. And to gain performance, it's clearly upscaling that will bring you the biggest gains. UE5 is planned with upscaling in mind, and this is not the first time that we have seen that, and it is what will offer you the most performance gains compared to the graphics preset of this title. I made a quick comparison with a 1490 at 4K between low and epic settings. We have a performance gain of around 24% with visible visual loss, while just using GLSS, TSR, or FSR quality will bring more than 50% performance gains, all the while still looking decent enough and better than low or medium settings. So yeah. I know for the native rest purist, the future is looking pretty grim, but upscalers are here to stay and they will take more and more space because they make sense, especially at 4K. So having a good quality upscaler is a big plus going forward to me. And AMG really, really needs to improve FSR. It's quite sad to see that TSR and XCSS are already doing much better in terms of image quality. I know FSR 3.1 is coming up later this year, maybe, but it's late and we don't know yet if it will be enough to catch up to the other upscalers, and I really hope it will improve a lot image quality-wise compared to what it is right now. But for this game, upscalers' implementation still need some work overall, like GLSS ghosting here is more prevalent than on some other games. So for now, TSR would be my pick in this game. Lumen implementation is also not the best. Indoors, it's particularly bad. Uh, lots of artifacts and denoising of Lumen software RT just does not look good here. Lots of artifacting, ghosting, and it's not pleasant to the eye at all. And it's a shame because indoors looks decent enough if it wasn't for the lightning. The game clearly look better outdoors and Fortunately, that's where you spend most of your time. But well, let's go and take a look at performance now. For the test, I did this on a small section of the game while working not far from one of the faction bays using eye details, render scale at 100% using TSR as base TAA for all cards. And at 1080p, well, it's looking already pretty dire, since even the 1490 caps at 111 FPS on average, with 1% at 86. We also see that the GeForce seem to have the lead in this title, since the 4080 Super uh, finished a notch above the 7900 XTX, so it probably also lacks optimization on the driver side for AMD right now. So yes, this allows the 4070 Super to slot right between the 7900 XTX and XT with the same level of overall performance here. The 4070 Super, 3090 Ti, 4070 and 3080 finished above the 7900 Jerry and 7800 XT. And we also see that the 4060 Ti's are the last cards to maintain a 60 FPS average, and it's really tough for a lot of cards below that. The 1080 Ti hangs around as best as it can around the 38 FPS average. The Intel cards don't really shine here either, since the A770 is a notch below the 3060 12GB here. And at the bottom of the chart, the GTX 1060 and A380 are both struggling, and I do not recommend buying the game for those who run on this type of card. Even with minimum details, with an upscale from 540p, it's difficult to reach 30 FPS on average. 
So yeah, already at 1080p I detailed, there are a lot of cards which are struggling at native res. Lowering the details will not allow you to go from 30 to 60 FPS, and you will almost necessarily have to use upscaling with most of the lower end cards, which really isn't great, because upscaling at 1080p isn't exactly amazing. At 1440p, end of the line for cards with 6 gigs of VRAM, which is mostly just the RTX 2060 here, which collapsed completely. For the other cards, no big changes, the 4090 remains alone in the lead, the 4080 Super remains above the 7900 XTX and the 7900 XT remains almost at the same level as the 4070 Ti Super. The 3090 Ti is positioned just behind with the 4070 Super, followed by the 7900 Jerry, which turned more from the 7800 XT than at 1080p, along with the 4070 and 3080 which are slotting between the two. But we are already reaching the 60 FPS average here with those cards. Below that, it's interesting to note that the 4060 Ti 16 GB does better than the 8 GB here, just like the 3060 12 GB sticks pretty close to the 4068 GB. Small hint, the VRAM is starting to have its importance here, depending on the card in different ways. Intel cards are still quite low here, since the 3060 remains ahead of the A770. 1440p ultra wide, no big change. I just left the card below the 3060 Ti and 6700 XT aside, as I was just struggling too much in this game. But overall, same ranking than at 1440p, it's just a bit heavier. At 4K, on the other hand, several things to note. It's super heavy, the chart speaks for itself, but we also have a VRAM issue since cards with 8 gigs of VRAM no longer load all the details to avoid uh, saturating the VRAM, which means that even if the performance seems similarish between the 4060 Ti 8 and 16 gig, in fact, we are not at all on the same page image quality wise. So I would say good VRAM management in the game in a way, which prevents performance from collapsing. On the other hand, for cards with 8 gigs of VRAM, the game is just ugly and it's better to lower the details or use upscaling to have a better looking image than at 4K native for those cards. It seems a little counterintuitive, but it is what it is. Regardless, the most powerful 8 gigs cards are unable to run the title without adjusting the settings anyway. And cards with 10 gigs and above, no real issue with VRAM from what I saw here. But yeah, only the 4090 reaches 60 FPS average here, the 4080 Super does just slightly better than the 7900 XTX, and then we find the 3090 Ti and 7900 XT and 4070 Ti Super are neck and neck. The 4070 Super, 7900 Jerry and 3080 are very close as well. 7800 XT and 4070 are also really close to each other, followed by the 7700 XT, which is often a lot at this level of performance. And we then find the 4060 Ti 16 gigs, which is both better in terms of graphics detail and performance than the 8 gig, but it is unplayable for both cards anyway. And as we had already seen earlier, lowering the graphics preset details does not have a huge impact on performance, roughly 20% between the lowest and highest details. Upscaling on the other hand, big gain in perspective just by going from native to DLSS quality. Scaling lower didn't really bring much for the 1490 since we are getting really close to CPU limits. And speaking of processors, well, the game is quite demanding there too. We see that the 7800X3D and 4700K or 13600K are quite close, but a small advantage on the 1% for the 7800X3D here. As is often the case, the 5800X3D is above the Ryzen 7600 and clearly above the 5600 and 3600. And as far as the 13100F, well, the processor was having trouble when the title was first launched. It was running at 100% on all four cores, probably because the title was compiling shaders in the background, but once that was done, things calmed down a bit and it was working pretty well, as we can see here, but the CPU load was higher than on the 6 cores processor, obviously, but other than that, no major issue for the little quad core, at least on what I was able to test. So CPU-wise, the game is also very, very heavy. So, yeah. It's pretty rough, the game is playable, but clearly it lacks optimization, whether it is the game itself or at driver levels too, and we see that the GeForce have the lead for the moment. Uh, VRAM level roughly at 6 gig, it was okay at 1080p, but not above, but whether it is uh, GTX 1060 or 2060, it's unplayable above 1080p anyway, and even at 1080p you will have to go 
with upscaling regardless. Uh, 4K with 8GB of VRAM up to 1440p. It was alright, but not at 4K. You have to adjust settings or textures. They won't load properly, but textures are not textures. It was too heavy at native 4K. Anyway, so in short, yes, to play this game, I recommend the high details or medium with TSR at around 65%. It's often the best compromise or DLSS quality if ghosting does not bother you with the GeForce. And if it's not smooth, you will have to, unfortunately, go even lower down the resolution scaling with upscaling. Don't recommend frame generation, even if the developers do. There are also a whole bunch of settings that the developers added that can help performance on their Steam page. And I would say use at your own risk. And if you don't feel like doing all the stuff, I would just recommend to wait that the game get optimization later on. The game can also apparently crash with the Intel 13th and 14th gen with the instability issues that we heard about recently. Personally, for my 4700K, I didn't run into the issue and I am waiting for Intel to clarify the basic specs with the motherboard manufacturers to change the BIOS later on. For the moment, it's still the full performance BIOS and I haven't had any crashes here, but you may get crashes yourself. And if you do, I recommend lowering the CPU frequencies until Intel sorts things out. But yeah, it's very much an early access game, but I hope it will run better. Wouldn't be sadly the first time we see early access titles never getting real optimization before or after release, so I hope they will improve it. But we will see. <laughs> and I think that's it for this one. I hope you liked this video. As usual, if you want to support the channel, the usual YouTube stuff, it's kind of annoying, but it helps. And if you want to support me directly, the coffee page of the channel in the description of the video, and as usual, a big thank you to all the contributors. The channel also survives largely thanks to you. Otherwise, uh, I will see you again very soon for some other videos. Take care of yourselves. Bye.